chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supplies worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride, it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and use promo code WATER to get 10% off their entire family of incredible products. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. From the water table, to our soils, to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. Most people know that iodine deficiency has been a crisis around the world. Iodine is key to so many of the body's functions, especially the thyroid. I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. Nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, and the best part is it helps fund InfoWars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off Super Detox Special at InfoWarsLife.com. take you live to the Central Texas Command Center in the heart of the resistance. It's Alex Jones. I want to be complex here. And if you listen to this radio show versus others, we bring in a lot of issues, a lot of names, a lot of terms you'll never hear anywhere. But you see more of those like technocracy, being brought into the common language as people discover what's going on. And the establishment in so many publications, it makes my head spin. We've quoted a lot of them here. Admits that's their plan, to dumb things down to where the public are, are like sheep and can't revolt against the practice of eating mutton. To quote Bertrand Russell, who is hailed as this incredible liberal and who they write all these books about and who won a Nobel Prize, but then you really read his writings that were technical, not, not best-selling books. And the guy's an absolute monster who wanted nuclear war to reduce world population and stuff. I mean, it's like, whoa, whoa, these people are as bad as Hitler. And it's this elite attitude that the public are scum and then a self-fulfilling prophecy to dumb us down so that they can make us the ignorant slaves they want. We are going to become gods, period. If you don't like it, get off. You don't have to contribute. You don't have to participate. But if you're going to interfere with me becoming God, you're going to have big trouble. All right, well, that's Richard Seed, physicist, 
and, and you hear similar things out of Ray Kurzweil, who I'm not even demonizing. Ray Kurzweil says a lot of stuff I agree with. The guy's invented a bunch of stuff. He's very smart, a billionaire. But all new tech on record has tracker systems to watch and control everything you do. The light bulbs that have been out for five years are designed so they can send data down power line to track everything you're doing. It's in the New York Times two years ago, but then MSNBC attacks me and says I'm insane because I believe the dishwasher is watching you. No, I didn't say that. Petraeus said that in Wired Magazine. Yes, I talked about it a decade before it was in the news because it was in the MIT Quarterly. It was in the Stanford Research Institute. See, that's what's so frustrating here is that 98% of this is public. And then we're here trying to get people to understand it, and they go, oh, I don't want to hear that. That's scary. But the good news is this has progressed so far that people realize that it's authoritarian and, and totalitarian, and so they're starting to say no to it. They're starting to realize that it's out of control, and it's a giant quasi-secretive program with a bunch of control freaks who say, we're allowed to do what we want and build our world. You better get out of our way. And then it's a fundamentally anti-human world for a tiny elite. I don't know how they think they're going to ever get all these benefits out of this horrible slave system they're building. I look at how they try to implode Latin America and Africa to control them. I see all this. I want to empower Latin America. And then Nancy Pelosi says, you're racist if you don't totally open the border, pay for all these people to come in who will on record become a permanent under political class. And then... The, even, even people with PhDs can't understand this when it's so simple. How am I going to get somebody I can't even talk to because I don't speak Spanish well? How am I going to wake them up? I mean, it's game over, folks. It's game over. And, and so I'm going to try to shut up because he's being polite and letting me talk, but I'll go on forever. Professor Daryl Hamamoto from the university uh, joining us, ucdavis.edu. You can find his page there. I mean, you've got the floor for the rest of this segment. I'm trying to shut up here. Go through how they're, because as a layman, I see what they do. They take everybody's basic rights, black, white, Asian, Hispanic. Most people, kids I see are, quote, mixed, so the future of that won't even matter. The system injecting race, sex issues, region issues, anti-male, female issues, because they give you the fake right of not trusting each other and the systems, the arbitrator, you know, the arbiter and the, the referee, and then, oh, we're going to, you know, hype up, we'll pay for your sex change. We're going to hype up that you can have a Hispanic America and we'll show the gringo and the you know, Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, and then the Ford Foundation's funding it, and liberation theology. And then how do you communicate to people about that? How do you show them that it's balkanization? Uh, break it down for folks out there from your research and being an insider. What's currently happening? What's going on in the model area, California, for this system? Well, what's happened is that uh, what originally started as a very useful and valuable critique, a way of understanding uh, U.S. national history from the perspective of immigration, race, ethnicity, gender, uh, has become hijacked uh, courtesy of the uh, foundations against that started to subsidize it and weaponize these forms of information. So now what was once uh, liberatory sources of knowledge have become oppressive. And this is what uh, your younger generation of um, uh, potentially educated uh, middle class people are being subjected to. So I want to shatter that paradigm. I want to introduce uh, other perspectives. I call it, for the sake of convenience, new world order theory. That's my objective. And I've been already introducing this uh, into the classroom. And this is where I've been running afoul of uh, the administration and uh, my department in specific, because they're locked into a 30 or 40 year old model based on race, ethnicity, and gender. It no longer obtains. It has zero uh, practical or even empirical <laughs> relevance to what's going on in the world now, which seems to be going um, to hell in a handbasket. So yeah, it's, it's information and education that, uh, that will uh, win the day. Uh, now, one secret weapon, so to speak, that these uh, the small stratum of um, power freaks have not really uh, anticipated is that historically, this is not just in the United States, but globally, historically, 
Uh, there's never been a larger educated middle class. These are people who have been to university and be people who have a college education. And it's these people that I'm focusing on who only need to be tricked slightly for all these other connections and synapses to fire uh, who, who will be won over to this, this uh, new level of understanding. And this is happening uh, constantly. It's just, it's multiplying. It's just, it's uh, metastasizing, if you will, in a, in a good way, uh, thanks to programs such as yours. It's, it's going to happen in the university as well, I'm convinced of it. But in order for that to uh, take place, some of us will have to take risks. Some of us will, uh, some of us will have to put our careers on the line. Uh, some of us will have to get used to being mocked. Uh, it doesn't bother me, as I told you, I was, I've always been the class clown. Uh, one of my favorite uh, intellectual heroes is the great Irish-American comedian George Carlin. Oh, yeah. And I, <laughs> I quote him uh, all the time in class, and he, he understands the profound duality of, of humanity. One of his great collections is called uh, Napalm and Silly Putty. Right? Both Napalm and Silly Putty came out of the same human consciousness. It's, it's that crazy. So I want to move it more in the direction of the Silly Putty and um, move away from the destructive technologies. And as I lecture in class, uh, I have a lot of students who are in the sciences, uh, expectant scientists and engineers. I'm telling them that uh, the situation is so out of whack that you have careers guaranteed for you to undo the damage that has been wrought by these power freaks to our environment, to our bodies, to our psyches. Uh, dehumanizing us. You will have a guaranteed career if you understand their system and, and create counter technologies, counter literature, oppositional forms of expression that you can cultivate at the university using their extensive resources. And we can retake the American Republic. We can regenerate this uh, necrotic death culture that has been foisted upon us by MTV. By the way, um, you might not be aware of this. I researched this because I've been uh, mobbed by these media. Uh, there's a site called Rate My Professors, and I score very low on that, I think. Um, and I, I checked into it. It's owned by MTV. It's an entertainment vehicle that's being used in order to uh, stigmatize me. But um, it's not going to happen. Um, the uh, Chancellor Katehi, the mad gasser, and I was there on that fateful Friday day when she called out the uh, police to gas uh, people expressing their, uh, their opposition to the direction of the university. Uh, the mad gasser, Linda Katehi, by the way, she's foreign born. One of the, the strategies for the globalist is to put um, foreign born people from anti democratic societies like Greece into these top level positions, such as Chancellor of the University of California, Davis, uh, because they're globalists, they're, they're fascists, they're totalitarians, they're authoritarians at minimum. Anyway, Linda Katehi um, earlier this year sent me a, uh, an extensive memorandum saying that uh, she's gonna put me on a 25% salary reduction for six months. So, and I say this because a lot of people uh, assume that um, so-called tenure is uh, is absolute, but there's many different ways to get you, and one of them is uh, death by a thousand cuts. So um, I'm going to contest it. And by the way, if there are any uh, labor attorneys out there, people who are who are um, interested in uh, making legal history, because University of California was also uh, the site where the Baki versus the U.S. Uh, the U.C. Board of Regents was argued in front of the Supreme Court. This could be bigger than Baki because we are going to raise issues that go far beyond that of affirmative action. We're going to go into the nature of the American Republic itself and the role of the University of California, California in destroying the American Republic. Professor Daryl Hamamoto is our guest. And he, he, again, he's a well-known um, political scientist and more. A cultural analyst, and he's won major awards for his research. And he basically has been going more and more public about what's really going on and, and, and telling the young people, the young adults there, about the man behind the curtain. And it's making them very unhappy. So they're like, hey, we're going to cut your money, buddy. We're going to turn your lights off. Better do what you're told. And he is now going the opposite direction. He's not a coward. 
And what he's exposing here is it isn't left and right going on at the universities. It is an authoritarian.